this is our spiritual practice video. And our spiritual practice from today is one of those uh, memorable, eloquent uh, phrases from Sir John that really qualifies him, in my mind, as being accounted among the mystics. And there's a, there's a, there's a, a beauty often to Sir John's writing in this book that uh, I think uh, is expressive of the deep spirituality and creativity and the generosity and, and, um, and gratitude that he saw as central virtues in life. And the practice is, and it's hard to forget it once you hear it, it's a little bit like trying uh, to not think of bananas, as he said, when he said, yet yeah, when I mentioned recently that we should just not think about bananas, and it's this. He says, just start praising everything in your life. Wow. Can you imagine doing that? Just start praising everything in your life. I guess I would start with this, with this computer in front of me. I praise this. I won't say its name. won't give any free advertising here. But I praise this tablet because think of all the people, all the ingenuity, all the work, all the effort of all the people that made that possible. I mean, actually, it would it virtually include billions of human beings are involved somehow in the process of making that object. It's less so for these glasses. Uh, but thankfully for these, wow, I'm just going to praise those glasses because without them, I, I couldn't see my screen. And I can praise my shoes that protect my feet. And of course, those are, rel those are minor examples. But what about if we just started praising everybody uh, in our lives? Now, we might want to moderate that a bit. We don't want people to maybe get frightened by us suddenly coming down the hole, praising everything all the time. And it might get tired after a while. So we might have to kind of moderate our enthusiasm a bit. But it certainly can be an inner attitude for sure. But, you know, praise and gratitude, they, they are also concrete because when you offer praise, and it doesn't always have to be in eloquent, elegant, extravagant terms, but just simply a kind of smile of, of thankfulness when someone does something that uh, maybe it's just what they should do, but it does tend to smooth the, the to lubricate the, the wheels of social, social intercourse. And before I come back to the practice itself, I just want to I want to draw in other the religious traditions of the world, and uh, and so that you'll see that this isn't just some personal um, personal interest of Sir John's gratitude. Um, I'll read you some some lines from some texts and from some uh, figures and other in various religious traditions. For instance, um, in in Sikhism, in the uh, in the Guru Granth Sahib, which uh, the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, which is the more full and formal title of the central scriptures of the Sikh religion, it says, um, "In the most horrible hell, there is terrible pain and suffering. It is the place of the ungrateful." Um, and then uh, among in Jainism. Uh, we find uh, this idea that uh, among Jains, a worship is addressed to the great savior figures, the Tirtankaras. Um, uh, and uh, uh, they, when people send direct their, their praise or worship towards the central saving figures, it's not, they're not doing it because they expect that the, the Tirtankaras are going to do something for them or save them. But instead, because the teaching of the Tirtankaras for Jains is, points out the path to, to moksha, to kevala, to salvation, uh, the, instead of worshiping the Tirtankaras uh, as a way of uh, attaining something, it's, it's, it's an expression of gratitude for the great gift of showing the path of being way showers uh, that they have given to Jains and to the rest of us by their example. And uh, uh, one scholar of Hinduism uh, writes uh, that uh, gratitude uh, is exalted as one of the most important virtues or dharma in many Hindu texts. And uh, the, um, the Ramayana, for instance, uh, Dr. Vrsuta Narayan, Narayanan points out, uh, tells us that to repay a good deed with another, to repay a good deed with another, this is the essence of the Sanatana Dharma of Hinduism, of Hinduism. 
So uh, we can see that the practice of gratitude is grounded s uh, centrally in, uh, in religious traditions. Um, and uh, so let's uh, just uh, think for a few moments, or let me try to set up for a few moments the spiritual practice from Sir John of just start praising everything in your life. Real, ad real gratitude, this kind of gratitude creates a shift in consciousness because by cultivating our capacity to see, as Sir John writes, the God-infused blessedness in every person and everything, we experience, he writes, an inner shift in consciousness toward a new space in our consciousness, where, he writes, we can know the sacred ecstasy of service as helpers in infinite creativity. So for Sir John, um, uh, j the, the just praising everything, this, this extravagant gratitude, is a way uh, of sort of motivating us uh, to begin working in service towards others and towards the whole creation. And why? Well, because from his extremely optimistic and, and mystical perspective, each one of us is a participant in or a helper in infinite creativity. And when we uh, are filled with gratitude, we uh, unclog the, uh, the channels of, of feeling within us. And instead of feeling resentment, we start to feel a sense of connectedness to other people. Uh, and I think that's probably uh, how gratitude uh, can work as a spiritual practice. Um, so let's uh, think for a moment of how actually to bring uh, this into our lives. Um, so in, in, in times of calm and, and contentedness, I'm very calm, I'm contented, that uh, perhaps because things are going well in my life, perhaps because I've been meditating, I've been exercising, and it's easy to become complacent and to start taking for granted all of the good things that we may have in our life. And, of course, one, one issue is that some people may think they don't have as much to be grateful for as others. And so we don't want to use this idea of gratitude as a way of kind of evening what is actually an uneven playing field, because there are people who have far more to be grateful for, at least in a material sense, than others. So we don't want to minimize that. On the other hand, no matter one's difficult circumstances, and of course it's not my place to tell anyone in a difficult circumstance that they should be filled with gratitude. That clearly is not an appropriate thing to say to someone um, as a directive from without. But in a difficult situation, if I were in one right now, I can imagine that uh, thinking, oh, at least this is going, at least I have that 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 could be a helpful way of thinking in that moment, and it could actually brighten my, my mood a bit. So I, I think that uh, if we keep that uh, caveat in mind, that this is not a directive to people uh, who may be in difficult circumstances to forget their difficulties. It's to, in the midst of that, perhaps use gratitude as a way to change our our, 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 our experience of life in such a way that we can at least find some contentedness in what is otherwise a very, or find some inner strength in what is otherwise a difficult circumstance. So, um, suppose that's not possible. There's just nothing it seems to be grateful for. Well, we can be grateful for the fact, according to Sir John, that our lives are ultimately situated within the divine. And uh, of course, if that kind of a belief is not, or experience is not available to you, then I, it's not my place to suggest that you take it up. I don't in any way want to be any kind of a kind of a fundamentalist here telling people what to do. Um, and, uh, but if that uh, belief is available to you, the idea that we're actually situated within the embrace of divine consciousness is the most extraordinary, is the most extraordinary idea. Because it, it's the most hopeful and optimistic of all ideas. It, it actually, if we were to allow our consciousness to dwell in that, we would become grateful for the whole fabric of life. And at that point, we start to actually approach the consciousness of the great mystics, the great saints, the great sages who in every circumstance 
were able to find within themselves a profound joy as being themselves expressions of or even at one with the divine ground of life, which is beyond death, beyond birth, beyond old age, beyond weakness, beyond limitations, beyond failing, beyond success, even the wildest kind of worldly success, the divine ground of life far transcends all of that. And to experience ourselves, to know ourselves as situated within that is to actually find within ourselves a kind of bomb that, uh, that can erase all suffering and all anxiety. And I think that's the standpoint from which Sir John uh, actually was, was said that we should just start praising everything in our lives. It was from that transcendent perspective. And it wasn't from some everyday perspective of just being happy for the good stuff I have, even if you don't have it.